What is up, y'all? It's your boy Winston Wolf. I'm back. I just want to do a quick video. I want to talk about Marvel What If Episode 4, the Doctor Strange episode. I don't know the actual name of the episode because I don't care that much about these shows. I mean, actually, who actually remembers, you know, the names of TV episodes? The only TV episode I can name, the actual name of that episode, is The Suitcase from Mad Men. Mad Men, The Suitcase. If you don't know the episode or you haven't watched Mad Men at all, what are you doing with your life? Go watch it. The Suitcase for Mad Men is the greatest episode of TV that I've ever seen in my life. The second one is the Pine Bear. Actually, I know two names of ep episodes. The Pine Barrens episode from The Sopranos is also an amazing episode of TV. Uh, so the Doctor Strange episode. I'm not. I didn't think it was you know a dumpster fire like the other ones. I thought you know the previous three episodes were just absolute trash. This one, I see that they were actually trying something. They were they were trying there, but you can have the best, you know, plot. You can have the best direction, the best of everything. But if the execution isn't there, it's just not going to land. And by that, I mean Benedict Cumberbatch. I don't know how to say his name. But just the way he delivered his lines, I don't know if they're telling some of these actors that this is these what if episodes are geared towards, you know, a more mature fan, adults, that type of thing. Because it's like half of the actors on here, they're actually performing the dialogue, you know, in a serious way as if they were doing a live action version of it. Version, not virgin. Version of it. And the other ones, it seems like they're confused whether this is like a Saturday morning cartoon. So they just come in at very, they come in, pause. They come to the situation very light, you know, airy. They're not, there's no weight to their performance. There's no seriousness. It's just almost like they one take Jake the whole thing. And it and it's just not good. And I don't think that he was purposely trying to tank it. Like how, oh my God, the guy that played the collector, uh, Benicio. When you watch the Guardians episode, the one where uh, T'Challa, if he was Star Lord, I mentioned it before. Benicio del Toro does not even bother to get in character. He does not care. You could tell he does not want to be there. I don't think uh, Benedict did that, but I just think that maybe he was confused at what it was. Also, he comes from, you know, a theater background. I don't know that for sure, but a lot of those British actors, they come from Shakespearean theater backgrounds and stuff like that. So if that's the case, most likely he needed the whole atmosphere. He needed the other actors to, you know, bounce off of, to, to pause, you know, to get that energy off of, to play off of, pause. So... The fact that he didn't have that, I think that that also, you know, added to his lackluster performance. Um, you know, they tried to do it, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Also, whenever I watch anything Doctor Strange related, I always think, what would Joaquin Phoenix do? Because if you don't know, he was Marvel's original choice. They really, really, really tried to get to Joaquin Phoenix, but he did not want to sign one of those long contracts. He doesn't want to be tied down. He doesn't want to miss out on stuff that he can actually sink his acting chops into. Pause. I, I don't know if that was pause worthy, but, you know, better be safe than sorry. Um, so he passed it up. So whenever I see anything Doctor Strange related, I think, how would Joaquin Phoenix do this? And, you know, from what we know about him, I think the Doctor Strange movie would have been way, way, way better. But I think he also would have probably launched the what if. I think he wouldn't have looked at it as a serious thing. I think he would have just did it because he was contractually obligated to do it. So, I mean, I I don't know how they could have did it better, except for maybe just stressing to the people that, you know, just, you know, approach this as if it was a live action film or show. Uh, and that's pretty much, I just, again, it was another story that I'm just confused that they have this Marvel universe that's so vast and there's so many what ifs that if you were sitting around smoking or drinking with your friends, you could probably come up with 30 or 40 of them just off the top of your heads wasted. That would be far more interesting and far better than the ones that they're picking. And I've mentioned it again for the millionth time. The only thing I'm looking forward to is the Marvel zombies, but the, the closer it gets to it and I see four strikeouts in a row, it's, I don't have any hope, but it's just like morbid curiosity now just to see how bad they're going to screw up Marvel Zombies. Because, I mean, look at all the stuff that happens in the Marvel Zombies comic books. They're not going to, it's going to be watered down. They're, they're not going to have that stuff. But but um, on the plus side, Wong did an excellent job in this. And Rachel McAdams. My Rachel. God, I would love to mm, just put my whole beak in there, man. Just, oh. 
But yeah, they did an excellent job. Um, oh, and uh, Tilda Swinton also did an excellent job. So I wonder if they did their their dialogue separately, because I'm sure if they, you know, had you know in the scenes where it was Tilda Swinton and Benedict, I'm sure they would his performance would have been a lot better because he'd be able to look at her, they'd be able to play off each other, and that's not a pause worthy. Okay, when it's different, when it's opposite sexes, you don't have to pause. So just letting you know public service announcement the more you know um so to me i i feel like they you know did all the dialogue separately alone maybe on 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 location while they're shooting their movies so hopefully with the next season they'll be able to get them all they'll schedule them all so that you know when you have scenes of two actors they can actually be together they can actually and then they they might be able to actually bounce ideas off of each other and stuff like that to you know make it even better but this, I just, I think this show is a waste. I think everything that Marvel has done on Disney Plus has been an absolute waste. I think it's dropped the stock of Marvel overall with these crappy shows. I think people have lost faith. I think knowing that all these shows and everything, especially the live action ones, they're leading up to the next Avengers. And I don't think anybody's hype. Nobody wants to see the Marvels and the Avengers. Nobody wants to see... Um, uh whoever else all these hacks that they got nobody wants to see these people all right just start a new group or something you know for sjw's for people with very little you know expectations and demands and that it'd be perfect for them but for us fans that have you know gone through the whole the whole um i don't know infinity saga i guess and all that you know through the whole 20 whatever movies this ain't it this is not it you know, I'll remember Marvel up until Endgame. After that, I refuse to acknowledge any of this garbage. But before I just keep on rambling and stuff, because I'm not feeling too good, I got to hit the sack, pause. Sack, I mean bed. All right, so. But anyways, this is your boy Winston Wolf. What if, Marvel What If Episode 4, the Doctor Strange episode. Uh, wow, out of 10 dog bones. Three and a half, all because of the supporting cast, Rachel McAdams, Wong, and Tilda Swinton. And that's all you're getting from me. So just, you know, kick rocks. Go find something to do, kid.